the darkness Flares are burning Light becomes shining On and on and on In the darkness Flares are burning Light becomes shining On and on and on Looking at the gate was a product of a dark time A flame fist, the wheels of God's time Looking down the barrel of tomorrow, it was harrowing But persevering over and over, more addictive than heroin A decade later still carrying on, another year to overcome Pop the flare with the good times ever roll Pulling all stops, if you fall back down, let us be a pick me up song It was a sun to overcome challenges too To channel the vibes of a rhyme that ring true Making beats and writing riffs, it was a daily routine Like I was in the basement cooking up the medicine Writing in reality, you fear of it the minute You let it get into later, get rid of it, gritting my teeth But looking forward to tomorrow Really, if you're sharing the feeling, throw your hands in the air to the ceiling. Throw your hands in the air to the ceiling. In the darkness, flares are burning. Light becomes shining on and on and on. In the darkness, flares are burning. Light becomes shining on and on and on. My guys are coming your way. Survival of the season. Mental gas, a victim in pain, feels like a ball and chain Thought you was an enemy with him As a dream, it all the can't break Your striving is not in vain Teach it every day, you keep a war And you get left, lost a piece of fight Can I play with bad mass? The evil that for duel is on and on Hate the dominant art Grand praise and culture, greedy watch Your don't carry on Stop a song, father, remember you got a brother And sisterhood, we are the army and foe Out the we are that mass set Damn it, both of your lives are fast We'll become a soul that breaks me heart If you hear what's left So much is done for those before me I get to dream of legacy and guns and fight I want to be the key, the kind of they come, how does it fall if you know the feeling? Throw your hands in the air to the ceiling. Throw your hands in the air to the ceiling. In the darkness, flares are burning, light becomes shining on and on and on. In the darkness, flares are burning, light becomes shining. On the front lines, lighting up the morning, let the new day rise. Let's are burning all right. The fires on the front lines, lighting up the morning, let the new day rise. Yes, I'm calling the conflict Rebelling the attack if you've got my back Crack on time, rhymes on time, let's hit the back Ain't it the way that my phone got a gold speak back In the darkness, flares are burning My beacon shining on and on and on In the darkness, flares are burning My beacon shining on Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of The Devil's Hour. My name is Jeff with a G, and for, I don't know, the next hour or so, I'll be showcasing the weird, the wild, and the wonderful, all for you on the internet. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Doing good? Cheers. Um, I'm doing okay. I uh, just booked another live show to uh, do basically this with people so that's nice um yeah i uh started doing a thing called a jam which is a just a minute podcast a micro podcast where uh, i'm actually going to be uh talking about some of the stories i've been talking about every week with the uh, sideshow history so um so yeah so it's abbreviated form so i'm like gonna cherry pick some things with has like really cool juicy stories and just tell them 
So, uh, I don't know, follow me on social media to keep track of that sort of stuff. Because it's pretty kind of cool. Yeah? That's what I thought. Anyways. <laughs> Fox News. All right, so last week, a uh, standoff actually occurred between law enforcement and a homeowner in Austin, Texas. Uh, dot, 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 over his lawn. That's right. So apparently this dude's lawn was so out of control that the police had to get involved. So they posted a nu- what they call a nuisance uh, warrant on his uh, front door. They tried to knock on it. No answer. So they posted the warrant, uh, posted the thing on there. And then uh, the city got to work to try to fix this guy's yard. Not sure what the deal was, uh, but it was kind of crazy enough to this sort of thing happen. After about an hour working on this guy's yard, shots fired from inside the house out into the yard. And so, of course, contractors bolted. Costs show back up. Uh, with uh, SWAT and a standoff began for about five or six hours. Uh, local schools got locked down because that's just how it goes. Um, they actually even had a breach of the house done by a robot. Yeah. And it turns out that the house caught fire. Don't know how. Um, probably the dude. Um, so eventually... The guy actually ran out into the street because house on fire. Um, but he still had his gun on him because Texas. And when the you know SWAT was trying to get him to put the gun down, he wouldn't do it. Kept branching, and so the, the, they had to basically shoot him, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, that that came to be this sort of thing. Now, the person in question said to be a uh, white male in his 50s. Now, if only it was a recent transplant, that would be so on board. How's that? Uh, 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 so, um, a, uh, There was a big gathering the other day on Monday in Dallas for a bunch of QAnon people. Um, Why? Because they were waiting for a special guest to speak. Who could they be waiting for? Why none other than JFK Jr. That's right. He didn't die. But he's just been secretly working against the uh, deep state uh, that's been supposedly controlling the world you know, with their cannibalistic vampire tendencies. Um, I mean, where else would he schedule his return? You know, as as well as supposedly announcing he was the running mate for 45, our disgraced president, uh, former president. Then, of course, the site of the brutal murder of the guy, of the man, and his, fa- his man's father. Shockingly, he didn't show up. Believe it or not, it's crazy. But rumor had it, he had tickets to the Rolling Stones the next night. So maybe between Start Me Up and Love is Strong. (laughs) Uh, This dumb can laughter. So New York, New York City here, uh, where I live now, uh, has a new mayor. His name is Eric Adams. He's also was the uh, former and uh, now former Brooklyn Borough President. But I'm not talking about him right now. I'm going to be talking about his main Republican uh, opponent, who is Curtis Sliwa. Uh, Sliwa or Sliwa, I don't know. I've been drinking. Cheers. He uh, on the date on Tuesday. He showed up to his local polling station to uh, cast his boat. Boat. (sighs) Cast his vote. But he didn't come alone. No, of course not. He actually came 
with one of his rescue kitties, one of essentially a dozen that he lives with in his studio apartment. Now, Sli yeah, Sliwa, Sliwa, whatever, uh, who actually founded the Guardian Angels, the anti-crime patrol, which is why he's wearing the bray, uh, like four, 40 years ago. Which is pretty cool. The other issue he had is he got a dispute other than, you know, having the cat. He uh, was also brandishing his big red jacket, which has his campaign information, which they would construe as that being campaigning. So he had to, you know, give the cat to an associate, take off the jacket, go and try to vote, of which he jammed up the machine. So that's always fun. Now, I'm just saying, he wouldn't have had this problem if he had a dog. It's there, Shinobi. Just had to give him a shout out. So, Shinobi. <laughs> and of course, there's always this. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. <laughs> I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Shall we shag now or shall we shag later? Is there anything you'd like to say about it? I've got an idea. <laughs> Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss? And perhaps I wouldn't mind if you admired my body. Oh, behave. Ah! Assassin! I am the Thank God. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. No, turn that off. Uh, we got a great show tonight. Uh, we've got Orgasm UK. We've got Pipsy Pinwheel. Crazy in the Brains. And, of course, all my other fun shenanigans. So uh, stay tuned. Be cool you know, and be groovy. And uh, we will be right back. Okay, so far, good. Uh, let's talk about our first guest, shall we? Uh, so, what I want to talk about, I want to talk about Orgasm UK. Now, the UK are just known as Orgasm, but there's a Orgasm here in the US, so hence Orgasm UK. Uh, they're actually this musical duo from England, England, uh, formed by Sam Matlock and Milky Way in uh, 28, uh, 2018. They actually have crashed the sounds, what some might call, I don't know, kind of cyberpunk. So it's very punk meets electronic music. Uh, so far, they've released 10 singles, and you can definitely hear that kind of cyberpunky sound on those those records. You know, if you want, you can check also check that out now with their latest, which is called Salma Hayek, which is fortuitous, especially considering that the Eternals is about to drop. So think of that as you're watching The Eternals with Work as in UK, Salma Hayek. There you go. <laughs>
Orgasm UK, everybody. Isn't that a lot of fun? Uh, yeah, definitely check them out. It's really cool and worthwhile. I dig them a lot. So, yeah. So, uh, as you guys know, I like showcasing the weird, the wild, and the wonderful. That also includes short films. And so I came across this one, which I really, really dug uh, as part of the 48-hour film festival stuff because that stuff's amazing, believe it or not. There's a lot of cool stuff like that. Uh, the one I'm about to showcase you actually won some awards on sound, uh, which when you watch, you'll understand. Um, so uh, sit back, relax, and catch out this cool film. We don't know what was making that sound. A constant drone emanating from the field, like giant pieces of metal scraping against one another. It's like it started living inside your head, making you crazy. For some reason, it never bothered Jack. He would go down to the edge of the field for hours and just stare into it, like it was speaking to him. I asked what he was doing, but he just kept staring. After a moment, he just turned to me like it was nothing. and said, don't worry, everything will be fine. And then walked into the corn and disappeared. My dad didn't care that Jack was gone. He resented Jack for being, as he said, such a weird kid. He always says how disappointed he was in Jack, that he wished he was never born. I hate it when you say that. While Jack was gone, a strange man came to talk to my dad. He wanted us to contact him immediately if my brother came back. I went out to the field every day. I sat there, waiting for him. Finally, after three days, he returned. It felt like a miracle. But he was different. We asked him what happened. He said he wasn't supposed to talk about it. My dad tried yelling at him, like he had done in the past to get Jack to talk, but Jack refused to speak. My dad yelled so hard this time, he bled out of his ears and nose. My dad had made up his mind a long time ago that Jack wasn't his son. But now he said whatever came out of that field isn't your brother. He called that strange man and they took my brother away. He didn't care. Hell, he was probably happy that Jack was gone. All I could think about was my brother. And for the first time since it started, I didn't hear the sound. But then something happened. That night, when I went to bed, I could hear Jack calling my name. 
After a minute, I realized I was only hearing it in my head. He told me what happened in the cornfield. He said he could feel something was in there with him, but he felt safe. Then he began to feel weightless, and the world started to turn upside down, and then everything went black. When he woke up, there was a mist covering him. He sat up, and it was like a giant void. The only light was behind him. He turned to it and saw a figure appear. The figure gave Jack a book and told him, when the time comes, that he would know what to do. I asked him where he was now. He said the man has him in a strange place and is making him do weird tests. Jack doesn't like the tests. He's coming home soon. He said not to worry and he'll explain more later. My dad was dealing with his inner demons the only way he knew how when Jack came back home. Jack put his hand on our dad's shoulder, as if he was telling him something. Jack made him understand that he needed to leave. Jack said that dad is far, far away now, and he will never be coming back. Jack sat me down and began to tell me more about where he went and what the figure told him. He said they came from a world just like ours, through a type of window they created by being able to shape time and space. He said something bad is coming. We need to be ready. We need to be able to protect everyone from that man and others like him because they are planning something that will hurt a lot of people. He said they shared it with him and he was going to share it with me. Now, I share it with you. Are you bored in the house and in the house bored? Well, we have the answer for you. It's the brand new burlesque deck. It will help you play with yourself while you're home alone. Solitaire has never been this sexy. Ooh, Miss Orchid May goes right on top of Simone Del Mar. Bored playing with yourself? Play with others. Zoom has never been this much fun. Two, three, four, four. Ooh, I have a oh. Now, just slightly by Simone Del Mar. Yay! Hanky, hanky. Not only do you get these 52 amazing playing cards, but we've included this, a cheat sheet of who the 26 performers are. Buy yourself a deck today. Cure the boredom at burlesquedeck.com. So what did you guys think? Lots of fun, right? I dug it. That's why I showcase it. That's all it is. And uh, it's fun, John Freak being a little leak. It happens. We have days. 
come back and watch the earlier stuff. You only missed one track act. So, uh, Orgasm UK is pretty dope, though. Just saying. But uh, we're not going to live in the past. We're going to live in the present. The present means talking about our next performer. So I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about Pipsy Pinwheel. Uh, Pipsy uh, brings in this amazing world of SciShow to various actual Renaissance uh, festival stages. Uh, yeah, they uh, work a lot of festivals. They're pretty dope. Um, let's showcase a video that uh, they did uh, during uh, quarantine. So... A lot of fun like that. They are now on stages, so check out your local um, Renaissance Festival. See if they're there. They are. Check it out. Um, so, yeah, for now, just uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you for the shirt. Yeah, it's y'all need science because fuckers do. Um, right now, watch in awe as Pipsy uh, flirts with death with her dangerous feats and deadly humor. Pipsy Pinwheel, everybody. Good evening! Pipsy Pinwheel here, and I am going to be performing for you a small version of my show, condensed, for your entertainment. Now to start off, I will be having to remove an article of clothing. Gasp! Calm down! Hold your applause! It's only my glove. I'll be providing my own music because I'm bad with technology. Here we go. <laughs> what was the point of that? Well, the point of that was to show you my first act, which is something I like to call hand torsion. Here we go. <laughs> sideshow industry mentally unstable also known as a human blockhead what that means is I'm going to put a nail into my nose here we go <laughs> all right we'll do it for real on which way I turn it, I get different stations. Moving on. Mmm. Ha, oh, gee, I thought it was blood, but it's not. Moving on, all right. You thought you've had enough of blockhead. Guess what? You haven't. Because lords and ladies, what I'm about to do for you is my world-renowned, amazing, famous bird impressions. Here we go. Guess what kind of bird I am? I'm a spoonbill. A spoon. All right. Up next. We have balloon animals. <gasps> That's right. This clown can make balloon animals. But I don't make balloon animals the normal way. Nay, nay, I like feeling as if I've brought them into this world myself. So, here we go. <laughs> now to give it life. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. All right, moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, sometimes get asked a lot of personal questions and yes, I'm a squirter. I mean, crier. I mean, here we go. Watch me cry on cue, otherwise called squirting. Here we go. Is 
Isn't nature beautiful? <sighs> no, second to last. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is, did you say mouth trap? Correct, a mouth trap. Jokes, 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 and here we go. takes the edge off. All right. Uh, this is, in fact, the most metal thing I do. <laughs> My favorite part is no one saying anything. Because I'm in my house. In quarantine. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to go up. It's going to go down. Behind my heart, between my lungs, and into my tum-tum. At which point... I will fold myself in half, bend over and make awkward eye contact with the camera, and pull the sword out to virtual applause. All right, here we go. I know some of you are worried about me hitting my heart. That is, in fact, a very real possibility. But fear not! According to my exes, I have no heart. pinwheel everybody that's yeah it's uh she's such uh she is the a delight uh so make sure you find her at your favorite um renaissance festival because i'm sure she'll be popping into that one and if not she'll get the next one that's fine um yeah how are we doing are we doing okay cheers of course you know what time it is right <laughs> That's right. Let's talk a little sideshow history, shall we? Um, which, once again, cheap plug. Uh, the Carney Show has gone on to Jam, which is the Just a Minute micro podcast. And on those podcasts, I'm basically telling some of the juiciest stories from my sideshow history. Uh, my first episode is all about Moses Berg, uh, which is out now. So follow me on social medias, and you can get uh, a link to Jam, and then. Sign up. It's free. You want to do it. And you just listen to me for two minutes more. Which I know is never enough. But anyways. 
on to today. So today I want to talk about I want to talk about uh, Johan Peterson. Uh, spelled differently than my name, so we're not related that I'm aware. Of. If we are, it's very, very, very distant. He's also known as the Icelandic giant and the Nordic giant. Uh, he was actually born in 1913 in Iceland, so that tracks. Uh, he's actually the third of nine children, and he actually grew up pretty normally. Nothing weird. Grew up as a normal kid. Uh, about the age of 15 or so, that's when the growth spurt kicked in. He actually got to be about seven foot two inches by the age of 17. Uh, and then, so yeah, really tall and crazy strong too. But the problem is, is like, because of that short amount of time of growing, uh, created a lot of undue stress on like joints and his back and stuff like that. So it made that rather difficult for him to do like regular work because seven foot two, constant pain, can't really do a nine to fiver. So what does a guy like that do? Well, of course joins a circus. He actually toured um, the the European vaudeville circuits. There's a fun picture of him going to sign. Uh, he did all the vaudeville theaters up until about World War II when World War II dropped. Uh, he kind of got stuck in Denmark. And so that way he uh, worked for their uh, shipyards for a while. Once the war was over, uh, the Ringling Brothers uh, Circus actually hired him there you go, like that. And he was making like $200 a week uh, to uh, stand there and look crazy. Which, if you think of that in today's dollars, ends up be about two grand ish uh, in money, in today's money. And this was all in Europe. He actually eventually made his way all the way to the US, where he was closing in about $1,000 a week of that time period money, which ends up being about 9K now. I would love that money. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. He actually stood tall. Uh, I don't like that. Go back there. I double clicked my thing. Professionalism. Uh, there he is. Cause like his traditional thing was doing like the horn helmet and big furs because it's a Nordic giant. Um, and he would sit there and bellow loudly to onlookers, which was cool. Uh, so he was doing that. And then Kept doing that until about 1963-ish when he retired and went to Florida to uh, Gibsonton, which is where uh, a lot of sideshow performers ended up uh, retiring. Now we'll do the picture. And that's him with his son, by the way. Uh, while he was living in Gibsonton, he actually got heavily involved in the community and did a lot of he could to not only make sure that everybody that was living there lived well, but also making sure that sideshow life was preserved so that's pretty cool and dope now about 1984 so about 20 years of him just living his life in Gibsonton being a great community leader he actually ended up suffering a fall and so at that point in time he decided he wanted to go visit the homeland go back to Iceland and so that's what he did and then shortly after he arrived he ended up uh, dying, which is unfortunate. But Johan Peterson, the Norse giant, Nordic giant, Viking, you know, Icelandic giant. Dude's amazing. So, uh, yeah. So that happened. Be right back. <laughs>
How are we doing? We doing okay? Cheers, everybody. For those, like Drummer Creeks in the chat, uh, I've been doing this show for a year and a half now-ish. And uh, for a while, I was doing it on a different network or different channel. And so, But I've been still doing this show. So I want to make sure those people I saw way back, I want to make sure they're still highlighted. So who I want to talk about now, uh, as far as my little retro look back, is I want to talk about my good friend, the amazing face, Dammit Dan Block. Um, he's been dazzling audiences with his brand of sideshow marvel uh, marvelry um, as a producer talent for the amazing three-legged dog sideshow. Um, and all sorts of really cool stuff. He also did a show for a bit on YouTube called The, the Pink Elephant Menagerie, uh, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm not going to lie. That's where I got that Pipsy uh, art, uh, stuff. So make sure you uh, follow that uh, Three-Legged Dog Show on YouTube and on the Instagrams as he does a lot of other cool stuff. He's just a great guy. Um, so anyways, here's a fun thing he did on the show last year. Hey there, folks. Uh, it's the uh, Amazing Face Damn It Damn Block here with a crazy new tutorial for you. Where I'm going to show you how to play a little game called Five Finger Play. So, why don't you come right along and have a good time? Let's we'll, we'll have some fun. Now, to play this game, you need a couple things. First thing you're going to need is a knife, of course. Now, I have a prison shiv. Now, I got this prison shiv from a collector of prison shivs uh, who was a maximum security prison guard who collected prison shivs in the 90s in New York City. Now, you don't need a prison shiv, but I personally like my prison shiv because aesthetically, it makes people feel a little uncomfortable. Now, we're not going to talk about these things, but <laughs> I've got a debt shot. Now, the second thing you're going to need is two functioning pair of hands. Now, what you're going to do is take the knife in your non in your dominant hand, and you put your non-dominant hand down, and you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and boom, that's that. Now, I'll give you one more, one more time. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and bam, that's that. Now, folks, I'm actually thinking, what's the danger of hitting your hand? Now, you can hit your hand, just you're not going to want to do that. Yeah, there's some danger there, now, don't get me wrong. Now, we're going to show some more stunts. I'm going to show you your non-dominant hand, and that's going to impress audiences everywhere you go. Now, but I just want to have a quick discussion. Folks, I am a trained professional, and at no point in time should you try this at home in any way, shape, or form. But let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to jump right back into it. The non-dominant hand, and you're just going to grip that tightly give put that down and give it the old one two now here here we go it's real one two three and oh shit hit myself right there now folks that that that, that that's that smarts a little bit but this reminds me of some time in 1996 96 we were traveling across the we were traveling across the country and um <laughs> things are getting crazy out there you know people were going nuts and i found myself uh in a city that i'd never been before and hang on it's getting a little slip i felt a city i would never been before and, oh my god Is your bar looking a little ordinary? Is it lacking something awesome? Well, head out to your local liquor store and, and pick, pick up, up something, something extraordinary. extraordinary. Grab a bottle of Old Umble Straight Whiskey or Old Umble Special Reserve. They're clean, smooth, easy drinking whiskeys that taste the way whiskey should taste. From humble beginnings to an extraordinary finish, Old Umble Whiskeys are what your bar needs today. Walk tall, be awesome, and, and drink humble. Old Umble Straight Whiskey and Old Umble special reserve get yours today Dan block everybody such a great great guy um he's one of the last people i saw before i moved up here uh from austin because we knew i knew he lived in, he lives in austin so that's what i knew um so yeah he's a good good guy so if you get a chance to see him do so can't wait till i see him again um anyway how are we, we doing good just i like keeping track and stuff like that. So um, let's talk about our next performer, shall we? Let's talk about Crazy in the Brains. That's right. Crazy in the Brains is actually the brainchild of uh, Chris Urban and Jeff Rubin. They're actually these two uh, punks whose previous bandmates actually bailed on them, leaving them with a guitar and a appropriated xylophone. That's right, xylophone. Um, now, in the most punk punk spirits, they made do with what they had and forged on creating this new band and proving that doing whatever you damn well please will always be where it's at. Because that's 
that's like totally legit. I love that. Now you can actually check out this cool kind of punk rock weird spirit by their uh, new single, which is called, appropriately enough, Punk Rocker. So crazy in the brains, everybody. Driving down the street I'm bored with looking good I got both fans on the wheel The cops are coming Crazy in the brains, everybody. Was that a lot of fun? I uh, I dig that song a lot, and so uh, they're good people. So yeah, definitely check out all their other stuff. Um, 
you guys can't. Did you guys have a good time? I can definitely talk. Yes. Of course, I'm drinking, but eh, what else is new? Anyway, you know what we need to do? We need to do some big thanks, shall we? Um, who should we thank? Well, first off, let's thank Wargasm UK. Uh, follow them on Instagram at this is Wargasm UK. Makes it nice and easy. Uh, you can also go to their website, which is wargasm.online. Uh, it's cool. Check out their stuff. It's really worthwhile. The Ten singles they have currently available. They're all like dope. Um, who else should we thank? How about Pipsy Pinwheel? Follow them on Instagram at Pipsy Pinwheel. And the Pipsy is double P. Just remember that. And then if you liked what you saw, uh, drop them some shekels. Go to paypal.me backslash Pipsy. P-I-P-P-S-I. Pipsy. Yeah. Maybe I should eat. <laughs> anyway, uh, who else should I think? Uh, let's thank uh, Crazy in the Brains. Uh, follow them on Instagram at Crazy in the Brains. And then uh, Crazy in the Brains dot Bandcamp dot com to pick up the one, pick up Punk Rocker, and then all their other really cool stuff because they've got a lot of really cool shit. Definitely pick it up. Who, shall, who else shall we thank? Well, of course, you know, Damn It Dead Blocked, Amazing Face. Uh, follow him on uh, the Instagrams. At three legged dog show, three legged dog sideshow. Sorry, because who wants to do anything simple? Three legged dog sideshow. Keep track of everything he has going on. Um, follow him on all the social medias. He's got a really fun TikTok as well. It's all cool. Uh, I think his TikTok is called Bangers by Dan. Uh, it's just really fun stories. He's a really funny guy. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. If you're in the New York area, day after Thanksgiving, I'm doing another live show. Firming up the, uh, the list, but, uh, one of the people is coming all the way from Baltimore, uh, that I've wanted to perform with for quite a long time. We never actually performed. We're good friends. We have been for a long time, but we just never performed together. And so, Hot Todd Lincoln's going to be here Black Friday for the Devil's Hour. Yeah, Baltimore, uh, Drama Freak. Hot Todd Lincoln's going to be here for the show. Um, I'm firming up some other stuff, but like, I've got some really good lineups like that. We're just double-checking dates because it's a holiday. So, some people are making a scene whether or not they're going to be available or not. So... Hot Todd Lincoln. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, follow all my social media stuff and everything like that going on. Uh, linktr.ee backslash carney show for all the other fun stuff, including a merch link, has a link to the jam, uh, which is my uh, little micro podcast. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, everybody, cheers. Be safe, be cool, be groovy, and as always, keep drinking, everybody. <laughs>